walang natira ni Jesus. Pag may natirang mitigating circumstance din. So, ganun lang kas kadali yung object niyo. No? So, if there is a combination of aggravating and mitigating circumstance, mag-view object mo muna. Pag may natirang aggravating, maximum period. Pag wala natirang medium period, pag may natirang mitigating circumstance, minimum period. So, ganun lang kasimple. So, okay na tayo sa general rule, na? No? Sa general rule, dalawa yung pinisider natin. Multiple aggravating circumstance, isa lang efekto, maximum period. Offset rule, i-offset mo muna. Tingnan mo kung ano yung remaining modified na. So, okay na tayo dyan. So, dito tayo sa exception. So, there are four exceptions. No? Number one. You have to be guided by Section 1 of Rule 138 because Rule 138 is one of the sources of legal ethics. Who may practice law? Ang sinasabi dyan ay any person heretofore duly admitted as a member of the bar or hereafter admitted as such in accordance with the provisions of this rule and who is in good and regular standing is entitled to practice law. Iyan po iyon. That is ULEP versus Legal Aid Clinic. ULEP versus Legal Aid Clinic. Okay? Yan yung doktrina. Alin yun, sir? Eh, yung any person. Kasi any person may mean na pwede palang mag-practice kung hindi yan natin makokorek, pwede palang mag-practice ang juridical person. So, let us disabuse... shares of XYZ, the 40% shares of XYZ, likewise owned by the same foreign corporation owned by foreigners that directly owns 40% of uh, ABC corporation. So to repeat, let's say the foreigners, right? The foreign held corporation owns 40,000 of 100,000. The same time, the foreign held corporation owns 40% of XYZ share in ABC Corporation. So the question now is, based on these figures, is ABC a Philippine national? Is it qualified to invest in public utility? Is it compliant with the Constitution? You have, of course, a reply. To make it simple, a reply is an answer to an answer. Ayan. And the purpose of the reply is to transverse new matters raised in the, in the answer. Transverse, dispute, di ba? contest, transverse, new matters raised in the answer. But even though you fail to find a reply, under the general under the new rules no if you fail to file a reply okay lang kasi exceptional situation lang ang rule na ngayon all new matters alleged in the answer are been controverted already so maski walang reply all matters raised in the answer are been controverted already if you talk
In relation to days in payment, the answer is yes, because the debtor would offer another thing. Uh, example, if the thing to be delivered is a sum of money like 20,000, the debtor instead would offer his carabao in payment of his debt and therefore the consent of the creditors is absolutely necessary. Okay? He may not want the carabao. Okay? But uh, uh, in application of payments, is the consent of the creditor required? Definitely. There is no question he because he would accept. Okay? Uh, then there is consent. However, okay, the question that would uh, have to be answered is to which debt the payment should be applied. The third... Uh, Together we can. Walang natira din yung video. Pag may natira ng mitigating circumstance din. So, ganun lang kas kadali yung object din. No? So, if there is a combination of aggravating and mitigating circumstance, mag yung object mo muna. Pag may natira ng aggravating, maximum period. Pag wala na tira, medium period. Pag may natira ng mitigating circumstance, minimum period. So, gano'n lang kasimple. So, okay na tayo sa general rule, na? No? Sa general rule, dalawa yung consider natin. Multiple aggravating circumstance, isa lang efekto, maximum period. Offset rule, i-offset mo muna. Tingnan mo kung ano yung remaining modified circumstance. So, okay na tayo dyan. So, dito tayo sa exception. So, there are four exceptions. No? Number one.
to our dear attendees from different parts of the country. I pray that you're all in a great state of health. This free webinar is streaming live via the Villales Law Center's YouTube channel and Facebook page. If you can hear my voice clearly, please type in the comment section, hashtag VLC. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Optimize this learning opportunity. Share this free online lecture to your friends and together learn at the comfort of your homes. I want to formally welcome you all to this free webinar. This is part of a series of free online lectures brought to you by the Virtual Law Companion of Villages Law Center. Allow me to share to you this good news. The Virtual Law Companion is the newest innovation of Villages Law Center which aims to provide an easy, convenient, and quality bar review experience. The Virtual Law Companion is a web application that is hosted on a dedicated cloud server. It can be accessed via the internet 24-7 for any web browser using any device or handheld computers like Android or iOS phones. Meaning, you can study anytime, anywhere, and from any mobile device. Please visit our website at www.villagislawcenter.com to know more about our programs and activities. Before we formally start, please take note of some reminders. First, this free webinar is pre-recorded to ensure the uninterrupted streaming of lectures. Secondly, VLC team will be with you to assist you should you need more information about our program. Please visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page. Without further ado, Please give your virtual class and welcome our lecturer today. Again, this free webinar is brought to you by our virtual law companion. Maraming salamat po. Together, we can make things happen. Together, we can. Pleasant uh, day, a pleasant day. I will be uh, sharing um, you the updates on corporation law. These are uh, selected, no selected topics on the uh, provisions of uh, Republic Act eleven two three two one, no the revised corporation code. So these are the topics that I uh, have selected. And uh, we'll uh, discuss today the doctrine of separate juridical personality, the trust fund doctrine, the doctrine of corporate opportunity, the application of sections 31 and 144 of the corporation code, the nature of government-owned and controlled corporation, and derivative suit. So we start with the... Uh, the doctrine of separate juridical personality. It is well settled rule that a corporation has its own personality separate and distinct from those of stockholders, directors, or officers. So absence of evidence that a corporate officer and or a director has exceeded their authority or any act being complained of tainted with bad faith or malice they cannot be held personally liable for their official acts because 
these were done in the performance of their official functions or duties. Right? So to clearly understand that knowledge on the doctrine of separate juridical personality is this illustration. Richard owns 90% of the shares of the capital stock of GOM Corporation. On one occasion, GOM Corporation represented by Richard as president and general manager executed a contract to sell a subdivision lot in favor of Tomas. For failure of GOM Corporation to develop the subdivision, Tomas filed an action for rescission and damages against GOM Corporation and Richard. The question now is, will the action prosper? That uh, case that we are uh, referring to is an action for rescission and damages not filed, not just only filed against the corporation, but likewise filed against Richard. Okay? So, with that question, whether that action prosper, the answer is, the action prospers against the corporation, but not against Richard. Why? Although Richard owns 90% or almost, no? Of the cor capital stock of GOM Corporation is still. Richard has a legal personality separate and distinct from that of GOM Corporation. Eh, nag-sign si Richard eh. Nang contract for and in behalf of GOM Corporation. If he signed the contract to sell, he did so as president of GOM, President and General Manager of GOM Corporation, not in his personal capacity. So again, the fact that Richard in this case, or any officer, or any director of the corporation, owns 90% or almost all the capital stock of a corporation is not in itself sufficient ground to disregard the separate legal personality of any officer or any director of a corporation because, again, they have separate personalities. Except, of course, if there is a showing, for example, of bad faith or malicious act of the uh, corporate officer or director. Let's now proceed with this uh, another uh, important topic in corporation law, which is the trust fund doctrine. In the case of en Enano Bote, Enano Bote versus uh, Alvarez, this is a complaint for sum of money filed by SBMA na, versus Centennial Air Incorporated. Not only the case was filed against uh, Centennial Air, but the complaint filed by SBMA was also filed against the stockholders of Centennial uh, Air, no? For failure of as uh, for failure of Centennial Air to pay rentals to SBMA. So Finailan si Enano Bote et Ali. Okay? the stockholders of Centennial Air. It was argued by the stockholders of Centennial Air that they were no longer stockholders of the corporation at the time when the lease agreement was executed between Centennial Air Incorporated and SBMA. And accordingly, they have entered into a deed of assignment na, of subscription rights with Alvarez. The RTC in this case held that Centennial Air Incorporated na, 
and individual defendants enano bote et al are jointly and severally liable to to pay plaintiff SBMA of the unpaid rentals among others and it was affirmed by the court of appeals so when this issue was elevated to the supreme court the supreme court again made an emphasis that this trans fund doctrine is or refers to subscription to the capital of a corporation constituting a fund to which creditors have a right to look for satisfaction of their claims and that the assignee in insolvency can maintain an action upon any unpaid subscription in order to realize assets for the payments of its debts. So yung first, yung, yung uh, trust fund doctrine being referred to in this case, which was first enunciated in the case of Wood versus Dahmer, no? uh, an American case, when it was adopted in Philippine Trust Company versus Rivera, iyan ang binigyang liwanag ng Supreme Court. Na? A question now is, is the trust fund doctrine limited only to stockholders' unpaid subscriptions? No. The trust fund doctrine is not limited to reaching the stockholders' unpaid subscriptions. Yung scope of this trust fund doctrine, when the corporation is insolvent, not just like uh, what happened uh, in this case, encompasses not only the capital stock, but also other property and assets generally regarded in equity as trust fund for the payment of corporate debts. So, all assets, property, own, belonging to the corporation held in trust for the benefit of the creditors that were distributed or in possession of the stockholders Regardless, ha, regardless of full payment of their subscriptions, may be reached by the creditor in satisfaction of their claim. So what is now the remedy of the creditor? In case the original subscriber is released to its capital stock from the obligation of paying for his shares in whole or in part, without a valuable consideration or fraudulently to the prejudice of creditors. So what's the remedy of the creditor? The creditor is allowed to maintain an action upon any unpaid subscriptions, thereby no, steps into the shoes of the corporation for the satisfaction of their debts. So, to make one a prima facie case in a suit against stockholders of a corporation of, or in particular of an insolvent corporation, no? to compel them to contribute to the payment of its debts by making good the unpaid balances upon their subscriptions, it is only necessary to establish that the stockholders have not in good Paid, paid the par value of the stocks of the corporation. Right? So why the creditor is allowed to maintain an action upon any unpaid subscription? Eh, it is because of that established doctrine that subscriptions to the capital of a corporation constitute a fund to which, again, for emphasis purposes, creditors have a right to look for satisfaction of their claims. Kaya nga yung, assign, yung assignee, na? 
can maintain ang assignment upon uh, uh, insolvent uh, corporation can maintain an action upon any unpaid no stockholders uh, subscription in order to realize the assets for the payment of its debts that was the uh, jurisprudence in the landmark case of Velasco versus Poizat. So to make out a prima facie uh, case in a suit against uh, the stockholders of an insolvent corporation, again, is to compel them to contribute to the payment of its debt by making good the unpaid balances upon their subscriptions. Right? Eh, pwede ho bang si subscriber mag-escape from uh, uh, obligation by failure of the officers of the corporation naman to perform their duty in making a call? Ha? Kasi baka sabihin ni subscriber, eh, we were not called upon naman yun eh. There was no notice upon us. So can I escape if I were the subscriber? Can I escape from my obligation? Invoking such failure of the officers of a corporation to perform their duty in making a call? No. It cannot be permitted that a subscriber can escape from his lawful obligation by reason of the failure of the officers of the corporation to perform their duty in making a call. And also, when the original mode of making the call becomes impracticable, in that case, the obligation must be treated as due upon demand. Yeah? So take note of this. The better doctrine is that when insolvency supervenes, all unpaid subscriptions become at once due and enforceable. What about the two instances when the creditor is allowed to maintain an action upon any unpaid subscriptions based on the trust fund doctrine. So following the um, or adapted from the Halley doctrine are these two instances. One is where the debtor corporation released the subscriber to its capital stock from the obligation of paying for the shares in whole or in part, without a valuable consideration or fraudulently to the prejudice of creditors. And second, where the debtor corporation is insolvent or has been dissolved without providing for the payment of its creditors. So, applying now these two instances in the case at bar. None. None of this is present. In short, in the complaint filed by SBMA, none was presented. So SBMA failed to either allege or prove any of these two grounds recognized in Hali no? or under this Hali doctrine when the trust fund may be applied to compel the stockholders to contribute to the payment of the uh, debts, no? the debts or the unpaid no? rentals by uh, Centennial Air Incorporated. So, maliwanag po yan. No? Kaya... Uh, these two, any of these two grounds is absent. Thus, SBMA has not uh, even pleaded either the insolvency of Centennial Air or its dissolution. And for that reason, 
SBMA, no? Cannot invoke its right against the stockholders. So what is evident in this complaint filed by SBMA is that it is just a simple collection suit. Right? So we proceed now to the um, second case. This time we will discuss the, the uh, doctrine of corporate opportunity. Now it is another important uh, topic in corporation law. When we speak of doctrine of corporation uh, opportunity, dito sa case ni Topros versus Chan, no, which is an end bank decision by the Supreme Court in 2021. Dito din discuss pursuant to this, uh, this uh, doctrine, whether uh, Chan in this case is liable for violation of his fiduciary duties under the corporation code. So, this doctrine of corporate opportunity, remember, it traces its roots to the general principles on directors and officers' liabilities. The doctrine of corporate opportunity, it arises out of the fundamental obligation of a fiduciary not to allow a conflict of their duty with their own interest. So, in, in, in this case uh, uh, of Topros versus uh, Chang, niliwanag ng uh, Supreme Court dito na yung doctrine, it limits the ability of those who owe a fiduciary duty to a corporation. So, take note again of Section 31 of the Corporation Code, now Section 30 of the Revised Corporation Code, which specifies the liabilities of directors, trustees, or officers. So, it reads, and I quote, directors or trustees who willfully and knowingly vote for or assent to patently unlawful acts of the corporation or who are guilty of gross negligence or bad faith in directing the affairs of the corporation or acquire any personal or pecuniary interest in conflict with their duty as such directors or trustees, they shall be jointly and severally for all damages, they shall be uh, liable jointly and severally for all damages resulting therefrom, suffered by the corporation, its stockholders, or members and other persons. So when a director, trustee, or officer attempts to acquire or acquires in violation of his duty, any interest adverse to the corporation in respect of any matter which has been reposed in him in confidence as to which equity imposes a disability upon him to deal in his own behalf, he shall be liable as a trustee for the corporation and must account for the profits which otherwise would have accrued to the corporation. Another one is uh, Section 34 of the Corporation Code, now Section 33 of the Revised Corporation Code. It also states disloyalty of a director. That is, where a director, by virtue of his office, acquires for himself a business opportunity which should belong to the corporation, thereby obtaining profits to the prejudice of such corporation, he must account to the latter for all such profits by refunding the same. Unless his act has been ratified by a vote of the stockholders owning or representing at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock. 
This provision shall be applicable notwithstanding the fact that the director risked his own funds in the venture. So, if the procedure is violated and a corporate uh, fiduciary takes the corporate opportunity anyway, the fiduciary violates the duty of loyalty and the corporation will be entitled to a constructive trust for of all profits obtained from the wrongful transaction. So this doctrine of corporate opportunity, it governs the legal responsibility of directors, officers, and controlling shareholders in a corporation under the duty of loyalty. Not to take such opportunities for themselves without first disclosing the opportunity to the board of directors of the corporation and giving the board the option to decline the opportunity on behalf of the corporation. So, if, uh, if damages under Section 34 of the Corporation Code, now Section 33 of the Revised Corporation Code, arises when a corporate officer or director takes a business opportunity for his own, provided uh, that it is sufficiently shown by the claim and that in determining uh, paragraph uh, uh, B, no? whether the opportunity is within the corporation's line of business, ito ho yung mga claim na? Uh, or instances that uh, you need to prove no? in order to claim for damages. Number one is, the corporation is financially able to exploit the opportunity. Na? What else? The opportunity is within the corporation's line of business. Third, the corporation has an interest or expectancy in the opportunity. And by taking the opportunity for his own, the corporate fiduciary will thereby be placed in a position inimical to his duties to the corporation, such as no, uh, uh, being designated or appointed as a trustee, an officer, or a corporate uh, director. So, consequently, it is not enough to impute bare acts, take note, of the transactions in which the claimant subjectively perceives the duty of loyalty to be breached. Ang importante, there must be that sufficient evidence presented in order to prove that yung claim of damages can indeed na, be awarded and in the premise on a concrete corporate opportunity falling under the parameters that we have stated. That is, only then that may actual damages relative to such lost opportunity be awarded. In the case, in this case, no, by the way, the Supreme Court agrees with the Regional Trial Court that Chang committed several acts showing personal or pecuniary interests that were in conflict with his duties as director and officer of Topros. Accordingly, there is no dispute that Chang established a number of corporations. Na? Meron siyang identity, meron siyang Golden Exim Corporation, meron siyang Top Gold, which were in the same line of business. And while still an officer and director of Top Pros, no? among others, ah? among others. So in view of these um, circumstances and such other uh, proven evidence, Top Pros was correct.
in pointing out that the doctrine of corporate opportunity applies in this case. Okay? Let's proceed now to another case. The case of uh, UCPB versus Secretary of Justice. It's a January 12, 2021 uh, case. Ano naman na nangyari dyan? UCPB, through its legal services, no, Division uh, Chief, filed a complaint affidavit in 2007, sometime in July 2007, no, for violation of Section 31 in relation to Section 144 of the Corporation Code against uh, private respondents uh, Antiporda and Carillon. In this case, the DOJ, in its issued uh, the in its in its issued resolution, held that Section One Hundred Forty Four, now Section One Hundred Forty Four of the Corporation Code was not applicable to violations of Section Thirty One of the Corporation Code, and that the action against Antiporda and Carillon had prescribed. Kaya dalawa yung issues dito. One is whether the court, for, uh, the court of appeals, no, which um, again um, affirmed that uh, one, no, uh, affirmed that the result, erred in ruling that Section 144 of the Corporation Code does not apply to Section 31. And whether the Court of Appeals erred in ruling that the action based on Section 31 of the Corporation Code had prescribed. Yeah. Since Section 31, sabi ng Supreme Court, provides for the remedy of civil action for damages, yung Section 144 of the Corporation Code does not apply anymore. The act of gross negligence and bad faith in directing the affairs of the corporation can be committed only by the directors and trustees of the corporation. Thus, consistent with the principle of strict construction of penal laws. Kasi dito, Sa case na to, it calls for the application of Sections 31 and 144 of the corp uh, Corporation Code, as we uh, mentioned earlier. And that Corporation Code, remember, has been repealed by the revised Corporation Code, which became effective on February 23, 2019. So despite the passage of the later law, the former law, the corporation code is to be applied in this case because the alleged violation committed by Antiporda and Tarion happened when? In 1998, wherein, obviously, the corporation code was still in effect. Now, as to the issue of whether um, the Court of Appeals erred in ruling that Section 144 of the Corporation Code does not apply to Section 31, we uh, uh, made it clear that Section 144 of the Corporation Code did not cover or apply no, to Section 31 of the same code. Kasi nga, again, with the passage of the revised Corporation Code, Ang, ang question kasi eh, yung bank court mag arrive pa at the same ruling on the uh, uh, issue as uh, it is lent using the same legal framework? Depende. Huh? The answer will depend upon the facts presented in the proceeding before the court. Wherein, the issue on the coverage or applicability of section 117 uh, 70 to section uh, 30, uh, 17 and now to section 30 of the revised uh, corporation code will be resolved. But 
take note that under the revised corporation code, there is now a provision on administrative sanctions that the Securities and Exchange Commission can impose if after due notice and hearing, and hearing it finds that any provision of the revised corporation code has been violated. Okay? So, meron pong provision doon na ng administrative sanctions now wherein the SEC can impose. So, while Section 170, 170 of the revised uh, corporation um, code no, clarifies that said section applies to other violations of the code or violations of any of the other provisions of this code or its amendments not otherwise is specifically penalized therein and provides for separate liability to the effect that liability for any of the foregoing offenses shall be separate from any other administrative, civil, or criminal liability under this code and under uh, uh, lost. Maliwanag po that with this, the court notes that the wording of the revised corporation code reinforces the court's interpretation that a violation of Section 31 of the Corporation Code, now Section 30 of the Revised Corporation Code, is now covered by Section 144 of the Corporation Code, now Section 170 of the Revised Corporation Code. Such language is still consistent with the violations contemplated under Section 144 no? of the Corporation Code, such as your violations, na yan, no? as, uh, as you can see on the screen, of any of the provisions of this code or its amendments, not otherwise specifically penalized therein, the operative phrase, not otherwise specifically penalized therein, being retained. Okay? So with that, also take note that the site civil liability provided under Section 31 of the Corporation Code, that is, it speaks of liability you know, jointly and severally for all damages resulting therefrom suffered by the corporation, its stockholders or members and other persons, and liability as a trustee for the corporation, no, and the fact that uh, they must account for the profits which otherwise would have been accrued to the corporation, you will notice that that phrase no, appears similarly in Section 30 of the, re of the Revised Corporation Code. In either um, section, you will also notice, in either section, huh, no administrative or criminal liability is provided. However, under the revised corporation code, there is now section 158 on administrative sanctions. That is, the uh, SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, can impose if, after due notice and hearing, it finds that a provision of the revised corporation code, as we made mention earlier, are violated. So, maliwanag na under the revised corporation code, yung commission or yung SEC has now the authority to impose any or all of the foregoing sanctions in case any provision of the revised corporation code, rules or regulations, or any of its orders has been violated. 
taking into consideration the extent of participation, nature, effects, frequency, and seriousness of the violation. All right. As to uh, whether the Court of Appeals erred in ruling that the action based on Section 31 of the corporation had prescribed, which is one of the uh, issues raised, the Supreme Court, again in this case, made it clear that it had already no, ruled, having ruled on the first issue, that Section 144 of the Corporation Code did not include violations of Section 31 na, as violations of any provisions that the Code or, amend, or, or its amendments not otherwise specifically penalize the ring, wherein the imprisonment for not less than 30 days, diba, but not more than 5 years was the imposable penalty, then Act Number 3326 is not, I repeat, it is not the applicable law on prescription. So, yung liability of the earring director, trustee, or officer under Section 31 of the Corporation Code being purely civil, Yung lahat ng damages resulting from its violation suffered by the corporation, its stockholders or members and other persons, it was held that it is the civil code, rather, that is the controlling law. Right? Let's now uh, proceed to another uh, topic as to the nature of government-owned and controlled corporation. Huh? Because uh, in the case of BSP versus COA, this is one of the uh, issues no? raised. Ito bang Banko Central ng Pilipinas uh, can be considered as a government-owned and controlled corporation. So, let's find out. Huh? So, yung BSP, na no? BSP, in this case, or Banko Central ng Pilipinas, ang pinagmula ng issue nila rito is because uh, uh, BSP theorizes that it may, na, it, 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 uh, pursuant, na, pursuant to Republic Act 7653, otherwise known as the new central bank, may deduct any reserve from its net profits to be remitted to the government. Yan ang basis niya. Meron silang Section 43 sa New Central Bank. Sabi niya, meron akong power sa ganyan. On the other hand, ang COA naman, or Commission on Audit, disagrees. No? This time, using as legal basis, Section 3 of Republic Act 76 56, otherwise known as an act requiring government-owned or controlled corporations to declare dividends under certain conditions to the national government and for other purposes. Take note that while the case was pending before uh, the, uh, the court, the Congress amended Republic Act 76536. Uh, on 2019, February. Thereafter, the Commission and Audit sa uh, Office of the General uh, Counsel na, issued an opinion na, stating that the BSP uh, is stating that uh, the, the BSP na, has no right to issue that uh, AOM, ano na, that uh, uh, has no right to issue that uh, resolution empowering them to have this deduction on reserve fund on the ground that yung Republic Act 
7656 is a general law. As a general law, cannot repeal Republic Act 7653, which is a special law. Ang ginawa ngayon ng COA, COA rendered a decision holding that Republic Act 7656 impliedly repealed Section 43 of Republic Act 7653. It reasoned out that although Republic Act 7653 is a special law applicable to BSP, but when it comes to computation of net earnings to be remitted to the government, the applicable law is Section 2 of Republic Act 7656 under the principle that a specific provision of a general statute prevails and repeals a general provision of a special law. Kaya ang issue now raised and elevated to be resolved by the Supreme Court is, did the COA commit grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction in issuing that a sale decision? Pero ang focus natin dyan, of course, is the issue on whether or not yung BSP it's, is outside the coverage of Republic Act 76 56. Now, does Section 2 ng Republic Act 7656 did not repeal Section 43 of 7653 because it is not a government-owned or controlled corporation as defined under Rep Republic Act 7656? Tama ba yun? So it is necessary to ascertain whether the BSP is within the coverage of Republic Act 7656. Because in the event that the BSP is indeed outside the coverage of Republic Act 7656, then there could be no irreconcilable conflict between these two provisions in resulting in an implied repeal. Diba? So, going back again, ito bang BSP is a government-owned or controlled corporation as defined under Republic Act 7656? Unang-una, ang government-owned or controlled corporation must be organized as a stock or non-stock corporation. Eh, yun know, bang BSP? Was it organized as a stock or non-stock corporation? BSP, in fact, does not qualify as a government-owned and controlled corporation as defined no? under Republic Act 7656 and under uh, the Administrative uh, Code. First, ang BSP is not, as I've said, it is not or it was not organized as a stock corporation. Thus, while uh, BSP has a capital under its charter no under its BS, bsp charter it does not have capital stock or share capital further its capital is not divided into shares of stocks wala ring stockholders wala ring voting shares so bsp cannot be classified as a stock corporation eh baka naman ho non-stock. Hindi din. BSP, neither BSP is a non-stock corporation because it does not have members. Unlike a non-stock corporations which are organized for charitable, religious, educational, scientific, etc. Yung BSP, hindi rin. It was not created for that purpose. So maliwanag na ang BSP is not a government-owned or controlled corporation. Hindi siya nagko-qualify as GOCC. Okay?
let's proceed now to um, uh, the uh, topic on derivative suit. No? Derivative suit is also an important no? subject or uh, topic in corporation uh, law. In the case of um, RDC versus uh, Agro, Supreme Court again, no? uh, takes the takes a look on the, how derivative suit is filed, under what circumstances, ano bang classing remedy to, no? Because um, in this case, Emmanuel no? et al. filed a case claiming what uh, was filed is a derivative suit. Kaya yung issue is whether or not Emmanuel et al. may sue on behalf of ARDC Corporation. Na? It's a corporation absent a resolution or any other grant of authority from its board of directors. Okay. Ano ba muna yung derivative suit? Derivative suit, it's an equitable remedy and one of the last resort. The right of stockholders to bring derivative suits, take note, is not based on any provision of the corporation code or even the securities regulation code. But it is a right that is implied in the fiduciary duties that directors owe the corporations and stockholders. So they are not grounded on law, but on equity. So, ang ano, kailangan ba kung derivative suit, kailangan pa ng resolution? No. A board resolution is not needed for the institution of a derivative suit. Since, as we have mentioned, derivative suit is a remedy of last resort, it must be shown that the board, to the detriment of the corporation, without a valid business consideration, refuses to remedy a corporate wrong. Kaya maliwanag na ang derivative suit can only be instituted after such an omission. In short, in short, or simply put, derivative suits take a back seat to board sanction litigation whenever the corporation is willing and able to sue in its own name. Yung derivative suit, again, it's grounded on equity. And it has proven to be an effective tool for the protection of minority shareholders. Again, ah, last resort ito. And such actions have for their object the vindication of a corporate injury. Even though they are not brought by the corporation but brought instead by the stockholders. Kaya nga ang derivative suits remain as an exception. Diba? Why? Because, as we all know, as a general rule, once there is a litigation involving a, cor uh, involving a corporation, that corporate litigation must be commenced by the corporation itself. Diba? Through its board of directors. Who has the power to sue? But again, this is an exception. Because this time, even in the absence of board resolution, any stockholder can find the same. No? Again, for the object, the vindication of a, for their object, the vindication of a corporate injury. So, despite na, uh, the derivative suits being grounded on equity, ito yung mga, by the way, ah, These are the uh, uh, requirements or requisites before a stockholder or member 
may bring an action in the name of a corporation or association as the case may be, provided that he's a stockholder or member at the time the act or transaction subject of the action occurred and the time the action was filed. Second, he exerted all reasonable efforts and alleged the same with particularity in the complaint to exhaust all remedies available under the Articles of Incorporation by laws, laws or rules governing the corporation or partnership to obtain the relief he desires, and that there is no appraisal rights available for the acts or act complained of, and that the suit is not a nuisance or harassment suit. But again, taking a look on the uh, problem at hand or the case at bar, despite the derivative suits being grounded on equity, they cannot prosper in the absence of any or some of the requisites that we have made mention, which we can find in the interim rules of procedures for intracorporate controversies. Dito ang absent yung second requisite. Because the second requisite is very clear that there should be that exertion of all reasonable efforts which all remedies must be exhausted, all remedies available, which is absent and wanting in this case. So, tandaan natin uli that before instituting a derivative suit, the relator stockholder must exert all reasonable efforts to exhaust all remedies available under the Articles of Incorporation, Bylaws, laws, rules governing the corporation or partnership or association to obtain the relief he or he, she desires. And that must be alleged in the complaint. The intention is to make the derivative suit the final or the last resort of the stockholder after all other remedies to obtain the relief sought had failed. In their petition, by the way, Emmanuel et al. alleged that they have exerted all reasonable efforts. Sinabi naman nila yun, na? that they have exhausted, they have alleged that no, in their complaint, that they have exhausted all remedies available to them. They pointed to the fact that they have even uh, uh, invited the uh, for a meeting, for an amicable settlement, no? uh, they were uh, records. Um, so, however, no? again, the Supreme Court no? uh, held that that's not enough. Yung exhaustion of all remedies available was not obtaining in this case. So, let's make it clear again na, na pagdating dito sa derivative suit, yung majority stockholders should not ordinarily be allowed to resort to derivative suits where a corporation under the effective control of the majority is wrong Ano ang, uh, ang uh, remedy? Diba? The board sanction litigation should take precedence over all derivative uh, actions. Kasi maliwanag na sinasabi ng batas, yung power to sue is in the board of directors. At yung derivative suit can only be allowed or it can prevail only in the absence of a remedy. Diba? In other words, yung majority stockholders who have undisputed corporate control cannot resort to derivative suits when there is nothing preventing the corporation no? in its, uh, the corporation from filing the case. Kasi laging last 
measurement. So I'm sure that with all this, uh, the discussions of these important uh, topics in corporation law, this will be um, uh, will not uh, will will be remembered, no? Because uh, these topics are uh, very important in such a way na they usually appear as issue no or as dispute between the stockholders and a corporation and also as a favorite bar problem with this thank you and a pleasant day everyone walang natira video video. Pag may natira ng mitigating circumstances, so kano lang kas kadali yung object niya. No? So if there is a combination of aggravating and mitigating circumstances, mag yung object mo muna. Pag may natira ng aggravating, maximum period. Pag wala natira ng medium period, pag may natira ng mitigating circumstances, minimum period. So kano lang kas simple. So okay na tayo sa general rule na. No? Sa general rule, dalawa yung pinipider natin. Multiple aggravating circumstances, isa lang yung efekto, maximum period. Offset rule, i-offset mo muna. Tingnan mo kung ano yung remaining modified. So, okay na tayo dyan. So, dito tayo sa exception. So, there are four exceptions. No? Number one. my friends you have of course a reply to make it simple a reply is an answer to an answer Ayan. and the purpose of the reply is to transverse new matters raised in the in the answer transverse dispute diba? contest transverse new matters raised in the answer but even though you fail to find a reply under the general under the new rules no if you fail to file a reply okay lang kasi exceptional situation lang ang rule na ngayon all new matters alleged in the answer are been controverted already so maski walang reply all matters raised in the answer are been controverted already if you talk In relation to decision in payment, the answer is yes, because the debtor would offer another thing. Uh, example, if the thing to be delivered is a sum of money like 20000 the debtor instead would offer his carabao in payment of his debt, and therefore the consent of the creditors is absolutely necessary. Okay? He may not want the carabao. Okay? But uh, uh, in application of payments, is the consent of the creditor required? Definitely, there is no question he because he would accept. Okay, uh, then there is consent. However, okay, the question that would uh, have to be answered is to which debt the payment should be applied. The third. Uh,
ang natira ni Jupiter. Pag may natirang mitigating circumstance in it, so ganun lang kasikandali yung object mo. No? So if there is a combination of aggravating and mitigating circumstance, mag yung object mo muna. Pag may natirang aggravating, maximum period. Pag wala natirang medium period, pag may natirang mitigating circumstance, minimum period. So ganun lang kasimple. So okay na tayo sa general rule, na? No? Sa general rule, dalawa yung pinisider natin. Multiple aggravating circumstance, isa lang efekto, maximum period. Offset rule, i-offset mo muna. Tingnan mo kung ano yung remaining modified na. So, okay na tayo dyan. So, dito tayo sa exception. So, there are four exceptions. No? Number one. my friends, you have, of course, a reply. To make it simple, a reply is an answer to an answer. Ayan. And the purpose of the reply is to transverse new matters raised in the, in the answer. Transverse, dispute, di ba? contest, transverse, new matters raised in the answer. But even though you fail to find a reply, under the general under the new rules no if you fail to file a reply okay lang kasi exceptional situation lang ang rule na ngayon all new matters alleged in the answer are been controverted already so maski walang reply all matters raised in the answer are been controverted already if you talk In relation to decision in payment, the answer is yes, because the debtor would offer another thing. Uh, example, if the thing to be delivered is a sum of money like 20000 the debtor instead would offer his carabao in payment of his debt, and therefore the consent of the creditors is absolutely necessary. Okay? He may not want the carabao. Okay? But uh, uh, in application of payments, is the consent of the creditor required? Definitely, there is no question he because he would accept. Okay, uh, then there is consent. However, okay, the question that would uh, have to be answered is to which debt the payment should be applied. The third. Uh, Together we can. Together we can. Walang natira ni Jupiter. Pag may natira ng mitigating circumstance din. So, ganun lang kasikandali yung object mo. No? So, if there is a combination of aggravating and mitigating circumstance, mag-i-object mo muna. 
Pag may natira ang graduating, maximum period. Pag wala natira, medium period. Pag may natira ang mitigating circumstance, medium period. So, gano'n lang kasimple. So, okay na tayo sa general rule, na? No? Sa general rule, dalawa yung consider natin. Multiple ang graduating circumstance, isa lang ang efekto, maximum period. Offset rule, i-offset mo muna. Tingnan mo kung ano yung remaining modified na. So, okay na tayo dyan. So, dito tayo sa exception. So, there are four exceptions. No? Number one. my friends, you have, of course, a reply. To make it simple, a reply is an answer to an answer. Ayan. And the purpose of the reply is to transverse new matters raised in the, in the answer. Transverse, dispute, di ba? contest, transverse, new matters raised in the answer. But even though you fail to find a reply, under the general under the new rules no if you fail to file a reply okay lang kasi exceptional situation lang ang rule na ngayon all new matters alleged in the answer are been controverted already so maski walang reply all matters raised in the answer are been controverted already if you talk In relation to decision in payment, the answer is yes, because the debtor would offer another thing. Uh, example, if the thing to be delivered is a sum of money like 20000 the debtor instead would offer his carabao in payment of his debt and therefore the consent of the creditors is absolutely necessary. Okay? He may not want the carabao. Okay? But uh, uh, in application of payments, is the consent of the creditor required? Definitely. There is no question he, because he would accept. Okay? Uh, then there is consent. However, okay, the question that would uh, have to be answered is to which debt the payment should be applied. The third... Uh, Together we can. Together we can. Walang natira video video. Pag may natira ng mitigating circumstance video. So, ganun lang kasi kandali yung offset rule. No? So, if there is a combination of aggravating and mitigating circumstance, mag-i-offset mo muna. Pag may natira ng aggravating, maximum video. Pag wala na tira, medium period. Pag may natira ng mitigating circumstance, medium period. So, gano'n lang kasimple. So, okay na tayo sa general rule, ha? No? 
Sa general rule, dalawa yung consider natin. Multiple aggravating circumstance, isa lang yung efekto, maximum period. Offset rule, i-offset mo muna. Tingnan mo kung ano yung remaining modified. So, okay na tayo dyan. So, dito tayo sa exception. So, there are four exceptions. No? Number one, my friends, you have, of course, a reply. To make it simple, a reply is an answer to an answer. Ayan. And the purpose of the reply is to transverse new matters raised in the, in the answer. Transverse, dispute, di ba? contest, transverse, new matters raised in the answer. But even though you fail to find a reply, under the general under the new rules no if you fail to file a reply okay lang kasi exceptional situation lang ang rule na ngayon all new matters alleged in the answer are been controverted already so maski walang reply all matters raised in the answer are been controverted already if you talk In relation to decision in payment, the answer is yes, because the debtor would offer another thing. Uh, example, if the thing to be delivered is a sum of money like 20000 the debtor instead would offer his carabao in payment of his debt, and therefore the consent of the creditors is absolutely necessary. Okay? He may not want the carabao. Okay? But uh, uh, in application of payments, is the consent of the creditor required? Definitely. There is no question he, because he would accept. Okay? Uh, then there is consent. However, okay, the question that would uh, have to be answered is to which debt the payment should be applied. The third... Uh, Together, we can. Walang natira din yung video. Pag may natira ng mitigating circumstances. So, kano lang kasakadali yung object mo. No? So, if there is a combination of aggravating and mitigating circumstances, mag yung object mo muna. Pag may natira ng aggravating, maximum period. Pag wala na tira, medium period. Pag may natira ng mitigating circumstance, medium period. So, gano'n lang kasimple. So, okay na tayo sa general rule, na? No? Sa general rule, dalawa yung consider natin. Multiple aggravating circumstance, isa lang yung efekto, maximum period. Offset rule, i-offset mo muna. 
Tingnan mo kung ano yung binigay yung modifying na So, okay na tayo dyan. So, dito tayo sa exception. So, there are four exception. No? Number one. my friends you have of course a reply to make it simple a reply is an answer to an answer Ayan. and the purpose of the reply is to transverse new matters raised in the, in the answer transverse dispute diba? contest transverse new matters raised in the answer but even though you fail to find a reply under the general under the new rules no if you fail to file a reply okay lang kasi exceptional situation lang ang rule na ngayon all new matters alleged in the answer are been controverted already so maski walang reply all matters raised in the answer are been controverted already if you talk In relation to addition in payment, the answer is yes, because the debtor would offer another thing. Uh, example, if the thing to be delivered is a sum of money like 20000 the debtor instead would offer his carabao in payment of his debt, and therefore the consent of the creditors is absolutely necessary. Okay? He may not want the carabao. Okay? But uh, uh, in application of payments, is the consent of the creditor required? Definitely, there is no question he because he would accept. Okay, uh, then there is consent. However, okay, the question that would uh, have to be answered is to which debt the payment should be applied. The third. Uh, Together we can. Together we can. Walang natira din yung video. Pag may natirang mitigating circumstance din. So, ganun lang kas kadali yung object mo. No? So, if there is a combination of aggravating and mitigating circumstance, mag yung object mo muna. Pag may natirang aggravating, maximum period. Pag wala na tira, medium period. Pag may natira ng mitigating circumstance, medium period. So, gano'n lang kasimple. So, okay na tayo sa general rule, na? No? Sa general rule, dalawa yung pinisider natin. Multiple aggravating circumstance, isa lang efekto, maximum period. Offset rule, i-offset mo muna. Tingnan mo kung ano yung remaining modifying natin. So, okay na tayo dyan. So, dito tayo sa exception. So, there are four exception. No? Number one,
So, of course, my friends, you have, of course, a reply. To make it simple, a reply is an answer to an answer. Ayan. And the purpose of the reply is to transverse new matters raised in the, in the answer. Transverse, dispute, di ba? contest, transverse, new matters raised in the answer. But even though you fail to find a reply under the general, under the new rules, no? If you fail to find a reply, okay lang. Kasi exceptional situation lang. Ang rule na ngayon, all new matters alleged in the answer are being controverted already. So, maski walang reply, all matters raised in the answer are being controverted already. If you talk In relation to addition in payment, the answer is yes, because the debtor would offer another thing. Uh, example, if the thing to be delivered is a sum of money like 20000 the debtor instead would offer his carabao in payment of his debt and therefore the consent of the creditors is absolutely necessary. Okay? He may not want the carabao. Okay? But uh, uh, in application of payments, is the consent of the creditor required? Definitely, there is no question he because he would accept. Okay, uh, then there is consent. However, okay, the question that would uh, have to be answered is to which debt the payment should be applied. The third. Uh, Together we can. Together we can. Walang natira video video. Pag may natira ng mitigating circumstance din. So kano lang kas kadali yung object niyo, no? So if there is a combination of aggravating and mitigating circumstance, mag yung object mo muna. Pag may natira ng aggravating, maximum period. Pag wala na tira, medium video. Pag may na tira ng mitigating circumstance, medium video. So, gano'n lang kasimple. So, okay na tayo sa general rule, na? No? Sa general rule, dalawa yung pinisider natin. Multiple aggravating circumstance, isa lang efekto, maximum period. Offset rule, i-offset mo muna. Tingnan mo kung ano yung remaining modified na. So, okay na tayo dyan. So, dito tayo sa exception. So, there are four exceptions. No? Number one, my friends, you have, of course, a reply. To make it simple, a reply is an answer to an answer. Ayan. 
And the purpose of the reply is to transverse new matters raised in the, in the answer. Transverse, dispute, di ba? contest, transverse, new matters raised in the answer. But even though you fail to find a reply under the general, under the new rules, no? If you fail to find a reply, okay lang. Kasi exceptional situation lang. Ang rule na ngayon, all new matters alleged in the answer are been controverted already. So, maski walang reply, all matters raised in the answer are been controverted already. If you talk In relation to decision in payment, the answer is yes, because the debtor would offer another thing. Uh, example, if the thing to be delivered is a sum of money like 20000 the debtor instead would offer his carabao in payment of his debt, and therefore the consent of the creditors is absolutely necessary. Okay? He may not want the carabao. Okay? But uh, uh, in application of payments, is the consent of the creditor required? Definitely, there is no question he because he would accept. Okay, uh, then there is consent. However, okay, the question that would uh, have to be answered is to which debt the payment should be applied. The third. Uh, Together we can. Together we can.